thing. Howie Kraus with the glove at first. Tremendous play. Gets us one away. Our coverage, by the way, is going to continue tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Is this the first run of the ball game? No, it's short. It's out number two. And Tim Bouncer on our Facebook.com poll. A lot of fans believing he needed to have a big game. And Fence Brokers is going to try to win this ball game. And that one is going to be caught for out number three. That retires the side. We head to the bottom of the first of the 2010 USSA Men's Major World Series presented by Bush Light. Junior sent to lead things off. We've seen some tremendous defensive plays from him so far. And there's a leadoff single. No double for Didonatus. Getting over to second. And that brings up Greg Cunnell.
slow roller, Ooh, wicked hop. And Dean Adonis is going to come in to score the first run of the ball game for Brent Mondo. Take a look at our bracket. See Dan Smith, they've already defeated Gene Chop. The winner of this game will face off against Dan Smith in the winner's bracket final. Could be a tremendous ball game. We saw Dan Smith defeat Resmondo at the conference championship in a five game series by a margin of three games to one. And it could be the first of three games that those teams could battle against one another. So Bryson Baker at the plate. Still nobody out. And Bryson Baker. Fair ball. Four to nothing. And here's Jeff Wallace. Goodness. That's one you don't even want to think about shaking off. Brings up Andy Purcell. A couple of comments added to our Facebook.com poll question. Mike Overhold, hip hip. I believe he's writing. Jimber commenting on the bombs that we saw. And of course, you can interact with fans watching this game. By logging on to Facebook.com and becoming a fan of U-Triple-S-A Slow Pitch Softball. And if you can't make it to the ball game, you can follow this game online on Facebook.com, on PointStreak.com, and PointStreak Mobile. Andy Purcell reaching. Brian Rainwater is retired for out number one.
Dennis Rooley. Now Batty. And Rooley draws the walk, runners on the corners. That one is cranked just enough to get it over the 400 in the center field wall. to nothing. So base runner on, one out, and Scott Strevel at the plate. field two away. Dinanis to the plate for the second time in this ball game. He draws a walk, and there's two on and two out. And Greg Canal. Frank Kennell's going to give Respondo a double digit lead. That one went over the flags into the parking lot.
Taija Sports is the official apparel partner of the USSA. With Taija Sports, you can have your team looking like the pros with personalized youth packages starting at around only $100 per player. This package includes one personalized jersey, a pair of pants, backpack, and a Taija Sports FlexFit cap. Go to TaijaSports.com where you'll find additional items to suit your sporting needs, such as high-quality roller bags, batting gloves, and footwear. Taija Sports, where it begins. Resmondo Sports is backed with nearly 300 USSA men's B, A, and AA World Tournament wins, in addition to the record-breaking five-time USSA Men's Major World Championships. This weekend only, Resmondo Sports is offering the high-performance composite bat combo of the year. You can pick up a Worth World Series Edition Resmondo Titan and the 2011 Worth Resmondo Duo for the World Series exclusive price of $4.99 when you buy both. To take advantage, see a Resmondo Sports representative at Disney or log on to resmondosports.com and use the promo code WSEDUO. Chris Walker. Gary Hensley, two on. Here in the top of the second. Matt O'Hara working hard to make sure that third camera was put in place. So hard that he distributed the job to our main man, Chris, who's been helping us out with the broadcast. But I'm sure you guys are glad to get a chance to see that view from the outfield. Earlier with the rain, it was not possible to put it out, but hopefully we'll have it for the rest of the series. It's Hensley. Looking to make it 11 to 3. Boom. It's off the scoreboard. So it's 11 to 3. Opposite way, curling towards the wall. That's going to be a triple. Or Renji Schulte. Brings up Rio Cardenas for the first time in this ball game. And to right, Strebel has it. It's 
That'll score the fourth run. As Schulte comes in from third. Rick Robertson, one of the hardest working men in USSA, working his way back up here to the broadcast booth. I had some questions for you come up on Facebook. I'm gonna find you a headset. Chad Walker. And we'll welcome back into our broadcast. Rick Robertson, better known as Robo in these parts. We'll make sure Matt can put your microphone on so we can hear you. That's a critical part to this. And there you are. Rick, you should be back. I've got to plug you in, though. We had uh, your feed downstairs. Now, you, there she go. Try this now. Yes, sir. Oh, there it there is. There you are, Rick. We missed you, buddy. <laughs> Trying you to get down there. Oh, it was a great time. We still thought in online that the home run of the Derby was the one that hit the flagpole. Oh, Wegmans. Yeah. That was unbelievable. I think it was actually McCraw earlier. Maybe it was. I know Wegman hit a couple out there. Tires decide four. Runs for Frenchbrookers there in the top of the second. Still, you were down on the field. Difficult conditions there for the home run derby for those athletes having to hit in the rain. Yeah, luckily it didn't rain a whole lot, but when it did, it, you know, the hands get slick, the ball gets slick, sometimes heavy. Uh, update for those of us that are just joining us on AJS and Suncoast. What's going to happen in that game? Well, immediately following this game will be two outs, bottom in the fifth, and uh, no runners on. Tie game, 7-7. Seven, seven. And darkness caught them. They couldn't play, couldn't finish. So it's a suspended game. There were some that asked you a question. Will we revert back? You know, to the last completed inning, and that is a no. It's suspended from the immediate spot that it that was this call. So we'll have a couple of more innings there. And Rosmondo has an 11-4 lead here, Bernie. They do. I was next door. Saw them put up part of that inning. You see the home run by Canal? No. Your car isn't safe in the parking lot, the normal one, the VIP. That's where I am. Went over the flags. Oh, my goodness. And who knows what it hit. He didn't have the best. Might have went after Chris's car again. <laughs> you can laugh about it a night later. It'll be funnier once George fixes it at all pro collision. <laughs> yes, sir. Best guy to come see in Osceola County, all pro collision. Unfortunately, I like to say that I've had two bumps taken there. I think the county commissioner ran into me about a year ago. Wasn't yes. It? Mike Freilinger. Right. Yep. Was he a commissioner or? The county. He was the head guy. He's no longer with us from what oh, I understand. Oh, they let him go. 
Ironically, right after the accident. <laughs> Wasn't too far. Here's Jeff Wallace. We have the base hit. Oh, the ball gets away, and Baker and Wallace are going to advance. Moving up to second and third. How about that? Give a shout out to Ralph Jara. I believe that might be how you pronounce it on our Facebook.com. Thanking us for, I would think, the weekend and the coverage. And of course, you guys are welcome. Hopefully, you guys have been able to enjoy it. And we're going to be here tomorrow at 3, Rick. I don't know whether you got that memo. No, I did not. So we're. We had said that we are going to get to winner's bracket coverage in the winner's bracket game between Dan Smith. And whomever wins this game is set for 7 o'clock. And prior to that, we should have a 3 p.m. game and a 5 p.m. game. And we're planning to bring those to you live. So we'll go 3, 5, and 7. And probably 8.30, I and think, probably, is the one after yeah, that. That's the last game of the night, the 8.30. That would be the loser's bracket final. Yes, indeed. Andy Purcell into center field. Sacrifice fly. That'll score a run. That's Bryson Baker coming in from third. Jeff Wallace moves over. Two third. 12 4. We're in the bottom of the second. Brian Rainwater, he's missing his pitcher out there in right field. He must oh. have missed the photo op. Yes, indeed. Didn't miss the ball. Three run home run. Brian Wainwater. If you look into that bullpen where Chris just shot, I think that they're starting to get that that's where to find the balls. Zoom into uh, that right field corner again. I think there's about 15 people out there trying to shag some balls. <laughs> well, if they go over behind that yellow fence, they'll find about two cases. Wendy Brockwell from our office is going to be pretty busy. We've had a number of people try to track down as we see Dennis Ruley reach on an infield single. Try to track down those Dudley Stadium balls. They were inquiring where they could purchase them for some of their tournaments. Oh, really? Well, that's not a ball you want to use in a tournament. We only use the stadium ball in the stadium fields. They should be using the classic M, the 40 core. Maybe they're playing on bigger ballparks, Rick. I'm not sure. Well, well, all be. I know is they're they're inquiring. So if they have the information, we'll try to put them in the right channels to pick it up, unless that's not possible. Well, we use the one that's only in the major program on the stadium. So our attorney, our general counsel, David Evol, is the bat and ball guru, and he set up. That's one's hit. It's Bobby Hughes. Really the third, Hughes in the second. Rosmondo's extended that lead to 14 to four. 11 runs in the first, three runs in the second. Nobody out. And Howie Krause will step to the plate. DJ Falk. Now that's Howie Krause. Or excuse me. They have BJ on the picture. Runners on the corners. It's the 15th run, really crossing the plate. Scott Strebel, the right fielder. Still nobody out. I have to pay a tribute to Larry Lofton for what a fantastic job he's done as the assistant tournament director to Warren. Warren Bellum had to go home due to a family emergency. 
His mother's not doing well, and Larry has picked up and just done everything, Bernie. Oh, my. How about this from Strebel? The ball was hit as high as it was far. And it's 18 to 4. And we see Didonatus once again. Street will put a charge into that one. He did not have injured his hand last night. So I'm not sure what he's done swinging the bat so far tonight. Taking a look at our stat tracker. He's one for one with two runs scored. So we've walked in. One. Got a hit. Oh, he hit this one. Not far enough. Schulte making the play in right field. That's Schulte out and right. Canel the batter. Comes into right center. It's going to go two. Question from uh, Rick Ayers Jr. He said, uh, Mr. Robertson, is the classic M done this year? Are they going to the classic plus? No, they're not going to do away with the classic M. Both balls are going to be available. Both are allowed. Some people prefer the classic M. Some of the talk on the street, the classic plus is a little bouncy. Uh, that's where when we were playing with that ball in Kansas City when they didn't have the classic M. BJ. And he up against the wall. Schulte. And that retires the side. Respondo scoring seven. It's 18 to four as we head to the third. So back to that. No, it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, Classic Plus is also less temperature dependent. Should perform just as well either in the you know in the heat or the cool. So uh, we appreciate the question, Rick. Hope that answers it for you. Bernie, I've been forgetting to fill in my bracket or busy and I'm unable to fill my bracket. We can I think 8 a.m. in the morning in the stadium we have Woodlaw GTL and on the outfield we'll have Sinister and Combat Laser Vision and at 930 we should have Aubrey's and Logo Express if I'm not mistaken and we are on a collision course for Rismondo Dan Smith unless fence brokers could come back here and be able to beat Rosmondo. Well, we saw them meet in the conference tournament. As Tim Howard comes to the box. And it was Dan Smith taking the conference tournament after losing the first game. Dan Smith came back to win three in a row. And it's really been Dan Smith dominating Rismondo the last couple times they've been out. So it'll be interesting to see that ball game. Well, they battled back and forth all year. I think the overall record's almost pretty even. Although Rismondo, the number one seed, they earned the most points in Conference USSA, won the most tournaments. And as I said, I'd, I'd have to look back, see what those records are. But you can throw all the records out. You can throw them out here. That ball's over the fence. How about that? Glidewell gets it out of here, right over the world, 
ESPN Wide World of Sports sign out there. I thought rainwater had a beat on it, Bernie. I did too. Timmy Bowser, one of the home run hitters. He drills it out there, ball fading away a little bit. And Rainwater tracks it down for the first out of the inning. 18-6, Rismondo leading over Fence Brokers. Fence Brokers is batting in the top of the third. How about that Dan Smith jean shop game, Bernie? It was very tight, especially after the rain delay. Yeah, they have the rule, as I told you when I left, 30 minutes after a lightning strike. I'm not sure exactly how long we were down. Yeah, Keen. Is that Keen? That's a fly ball in the left field. As Rainwater camped under it for the second out. Still there's two outs, top of the third. And Chris Walker, player sponsor. Eighteen to six, our score. Matt O'Hara is starting to get back on top of things in the broadcast. Oh, it hit to right. That was a line drive, basically, out to right field. And the side retired, Rick. We yes, sir. Go to the bottom of the third. Eighteen to six, our score. It's the nightcap from ESPN Wide World of Sports, the 2010 U.S.A. Men's Major World Series. Presented by Bush Light. It's that time to kick back and enjoy a Bush Light. Bottom of the third. Uh, question for from Sean McDonald. Yes. As you see Bryson Breaker, Baker leading off. Um, they answer the first part of his question. He said all the bats in play have passed the compression test. Yes, that's why they're in the barrel. Are they being tested again? And the answer is no. He's asking. The bat could break down, I guess, theoretically on the swings, but it's still probably not something that's happening on two or three swings. Or maybe, no, maybe not we're talking happen. about 100 swings this week. Well, it could happen maybe on a little bit less than that. But you know, he, And he also remarks about being used by more than one player. 
for the most part, these guys use their own bands. They don't share them. Well, that's the rules we play by now. I think it still makes it simple. A lot yeah. of questions that we had earlier, and DW was in, they had asked about expanding the testing. And the problem, as we mentioned last night, is, is it just in some ways starts to become a logistics nightmare that we're you guys are working as best as you can to get as many done as possible. And this just saves people like Steve Salute. They would be here till two in the morning every night testing bats if we did it all the time. So at least we know that they're good to begin with. And that basically takes a lot of the problems out of it. Oh, exactly. And then we'd be delaying games. And as you said, it's a logistical nightmare. Wallace, that ball. Oh, he hit that dead center. Oh, Ooh, that's over the scoreboard. That's over the golden domes. That might have been the farthest ball hit tonight. Bernie, that ball right there. <laughs> yeah, Jerry, the Disney guy, was in awe. The guy that was on the field with me. He had yep. never seen this before. Wow. Well, they put on a show, that's for sure. And in the rain. I was soaked, but I was also soaked from the rain and just, I, it was warm. I was sweating. Did it change? So that's 19 for Rosmondo on Wallace's mammoth home run. Six for fence brokers. And I don't know what Perry's saying out there. Hensley, the pitcher, probably like, oh, my. <laughs> Did you, are you kidding me? Andy Purcell popped up. He flips his bat. It's a nice play. Out number two. I'm asking why not have the world's in SoCal. Better weather out there, but I think it's been tradition to put it here. Hasn't it been, Rick? Yes, our national headquarters is here. We, we began playing here in 2000. We've been here every year. Top right notch now they're facility. in a partnership with Disney that I believe the contract extends. Yes, I think it's. At least another four or five years possibly. Three or four. I think we went through 2013. So Rainwater up, that's two outs, and he hits it. Yes, sir. No doubt about it. Twenty to six. This ball was hit one well. up. Jimmer, yes, that probably was the longest home run hit so far. I believe so. Greg Jones, hello, Mr. Robertson. I don't think the major players would enjoy hitting the Classic Plus. No, probably not. Here in Texas, the heat makes a ball like a sock during the day games. I use them for batting practice because they will not dent your bat at all. That's probably true. And no, we don't use them unless we have to or unless there's nothing else there. I think Don and the board are pretty pleased with the classic M. That is the conference ball on a 300 foot park. I guess you guys never would have imagined earlier today with that AJS game that you run out of daylight. No. Seems the game started at 430. The rain just kept going today. But it got dark and then we delayed and delayed. Well, that's uh, we're still moving along pretty well for the tournament as we see Ruley get aboard. Couches knocks the ball down. Once again, really hustling the first.
Mr. Bobby Hughes will be next to take a shot at the plate. Out of Conway, Arkansas. And Bobby hits one into the darkness. Will it carry out of this park? Just enough. Wow. Yes, indeed. Two more runs. 22 to 6. Bottom half the third. Another good night, Rick. Get this, we've had 7,900 different IP addresses log on tonight. Uh, tonight? And watch the broadcast. Wow, that's getting How close we, to 20,000. It's been a uh, certainly a tremendous oh. week Krause. of watching as Kraus has cranked this one over the left field wall. Howie Krause hit it on the line right over the USSA banner for a solo shot, 23-6, up by 17. Run rules, 30 after 3, 20 after 4, and 15 after 5. And I believe Zach King and Perry Hensley are going to talk about it, trying to kill some time. Change the momentum. Our plate up by Chuck Doc Beckwell is in between him. If you can get a shot, he he's got to look up to both of them. They break it up. Tony Walzak down at third. Dwayne Posovich is second. Jason Oberlag. Proud of Arkansas down at first. Jason's still a little dinged up. He's got a back issue. Pulled something as we said yesterday. Streamer to the plate. You know, high, real high long home run. I believe it was as high as it was long as I said when he hit it. Might have been out. As you have alluded before, the home run in the elevator champ, but that one got all the way out. Yes, it did. He rips it down the right field line for a double. Uh, Tom Dinadonis, the third, coming back. Mike. Wants to know how many home runs have taken place this weekend. I don't have uh, that type of information, but I can Oof. tell you Rick Baker has six, Eisenhower six. Those two have the most home runs individually. Dykes and Helmer both have five. Philby has four. Folk has four. Coco has four. And BJ Folk, by the way, came into this game one of four players that are perfect so far, hitting 1,000. And now it strips a foul, just foul. So B.J. Folk is perfect at the plate. Along with who? Let me bring that back up one second. I say last year, Dennis Rooley. B.J. Folk, Rosenbaum from AJS, Rye from Aubrey's, and um, Matt from GTL. Wow. Donovan Polkraka leading and runs batted in. He has 12. Baker from Dan Smith behind him with 11. Rye with 11. Helmer and Coco with 10. There's another RBI for Dee Donatus. Two more runs scored. And Dee Donatus puts a charge in it. He's hit about at least three or four. In our 2009 and 2010 home run champions, Greg Canales up the bat. Dina Nottis, Matt, informed me, has hit five. And he 
He's been on top of getting the pictures for every one of them, I bet. Oh, yeah, man's the hardest working guy in U-Triple-S-A. Matt O'Hare. B.J. Folk. Billy Jack. Oh, yeah, he gets it, but not going to get out of here. Twenty-five to six, our score. Three innings complete. We respond to fence brokers. Uh oh. I don't know if you saw that, Bernie. We had a pop up. And Greg Cannell was unable to come up with it. Perry Hensley leading it off here in the fourth. Hensley takes advantage. Actually, I was distracted, Rick, because I came over here to help out Matt, who's saying goodnight to his girlfriend, Bubbles. <laughs> and I've been flabbergasted of how you can get honey mustard sauce and a keyboard. Oh, my. Reggie Schulte. He'll step up to the plate. Really? To Baker. For one. There's one. To BJ. Not enough. We've got a change in for Rosmondo. Mike Rines is now playing second base. He should be hitting in Wallace's spot. Canell has moved behind the plate. Another one up the middle. They turn they to try this it time. again and they got it right. Wow. How about that? So now Rismondo needs one run to win it, correct? Yes, sir. Unless we exactly go to the bottom correct. of the fourth. That was Titanatus to Baker the first. What a double play.
Bryson Baker. And the single that brings up Jeff Wallace for his motto needs one run to win it right here. Well, I was incorrect. Rhines is not hitting for Wallace. I'm not, worried. I'm not sure who he's in for. He was playing second base. Oh, they probably moved Jeff Wallace to the. I don't know. We'll figure it out when he comes to bat. 19 run differential. Is Mondo looking for one? And then again, AJS Sunco, 7-7, seven, seven, two outs in the fifth. Oh, there, there's a hit down that left field corner. Bryson's going to end up at third. And Jeff's going to go over to second. And Andy Purcell. Andy Purcell, the winning run is on third. Resmano looking to move on to take on Dan Smith. That's the one everybody's been looking for. The battle between the two mega powers, Smith and Resmondo. A lot of talk about possibly GTL, sleeper AJS. You know, even maybe EWS shirts and logos, who's already out of the tournament, could possibly make a run at him. You know, and that's, that's the game the winner. End. Bernie, it's been a pleasure. Rick, thank you. You bet. I got to go do some more work, get ready for the next game. And that'll do it for this end tonight. We thank you for those of you joining us online on Facebook.com on Point Street. And of course, for our stream, we will be back tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Not sure who we'll have. But 3 and 5 p.m. Losers Bracket Game. Dan Smith and Rosmato tomorrow night at 7 o'clock p.m. And the Losers Bracket Final at 8.30. Stephanie on her way down. Going to try to grab Bobby Hughes, who had six runs batted in. And the broadcast.
are standing by. Alex Stephanie is on her way by. down, um, grabbing Bob. the microphone. They're going to get ready. And action. Moving in action. Huh? And scene. <laughs> She'll tell I'm going to do some interpretive dance. What um, position do you play so I, I can introduce field. you? Perfect, thank you. You're not watching the game? You're I was game. watching the game. Here. <laughs> tell me when to go. All right, Stephanie's ready. Just Getting like point. Practicing Aaron Andrews. Go ahead. I'm here with Bobby Hughes, center fielder for Esmondo. They just came off of a big win, moving them on into the championship finals tomorrow night. Um, talk about your win tonight. Well, um, kind of the same thing we've been doing all tournament. We just came out early. We got we got ahead, and uh, we, we really never relinquished the lead. Um, and all three times, you know, the team has kind of pretty much uh, shut it down, and uh, we just got a big lead and never looked back. And then you're going up against Dan Smith tomorrow, so it'll be a big rematch after sure. the conference tournament. Sure. Uh, how are you feeling about that? Good. I mean, uh, we didn't play very well there, um, and they played pretty good. They put it on us. Um, but, uh, you know, we got some guys that got hot this weekend. We're hitting the ball pretty well, Bye, so guys. it should be a great game. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Stephanie. That concludes our coverage. We will see you tomorrow as the 2010 U.S.A. Men's Major continues here from ESPN's Wide World of Sports.